some examples of measurement results in a certain patients. We have here the result screen with different numbers, with different parameters. And on the right hand side, we have the overview on the physiology and the physiological model, which starts with the blood flow, which is also showing the determinants of the blood flow, which is the preload, um, indicated by the global end diastolic volume index, the afterload, the systemic vascular resistance index, as well as the contractility information here with the cardiac function index and cardiac power index. And we have also here the parameter on the lung situation, the extravascular lung water index, the pulmonary vascular permeability index. And in the end, dependent on the findings here, there are several treatment options to improve or change the preload. We have to add or withdraw fluids to change the vascular resistance. We can use laser active drugs and to change the contractility we can apply anotropic drugs. So in this example, we see first of all a cardiac index of 1.9 in relation to the normal range area of 3 to 5, that's pretty low. So we have a situation of a reduced blood flow. And now we have to check why is this situation. So let's start with the preload status. Preload is the global end diastolic volume index shown over here, <coughs> which has also a quite low value. And only when we look at these two parameters, at these two informations, we see a low blood flow and we see a low preload status, we may already conclude that there is a volume demand in the patient. But let's continue to interpret. If the patient is fully controlled, mechanically ventilated, we can also have a look at the parameters drop volume variation, which gives an information on their volume responsiveness. In this case, the value is also quite high, it means there is a huge difference between inspiration and expiration, indicating that the patient most likely will benefit from fluid loading, which is again a confirmation of, a, of the decision to give fluid to the patient. What about afterload? Systemic vascular resistance is pretty high, but this can be also an autoregulatory reaction of the body on the low blood flow. The contractility parameters, cardiac function index, cardiac power index, are both in a normal range, so there is no, seems to be no problem in the cardiac function. And finally, we can have a look at the uh, lung parameters, the extravascular lung water index is also in a normal range. And if this is the case, if there is no pulmonary edema confirmed, we don't have to interpret the pulmonary vascular permeability index. So from this findings, with a low blood flow, with a low volume status, with high fluid responsibility, of course there is a conclusion that this patient is under hypovolemia and treatment is of course also quite clear. Giving fluid to the patient, possibly also apply vasodilators to decrease vascular resistance, but most likely this will more or less normalize due to the fluid loading therapy and also reaction of the body to the improved situation. It is important when we apply therapy to repeat also the thermal dilution measurement to get updates on the discontinuous, on the intermittent values like global end diastolic volume to really see if there is a change in the patient situation. 